Okay. So, we will continue from where we were doing last class, we are trying to look estimate k thermal conductivity and I think we are talking about uh, some of those you know like solid conduct estimated solid conductivity, estimated solid conductivity from for various kind of concrete in fact, this is concrete with uh, uh, concrete this is different types of aggregates. So, one can actually uh, estimate them for mortar and concrete what is the solid conductivity. Now, we are trying to look at and their porosities also one can determine through uh, water permeable porosity test and things like that because this is water permeable porosity can very easily measured. First of all take a cubic sample or you know solid sample right saturate it for 48 hours and for confirmation another 24 hours two weight should not be different by 0.5 percent right. So, two consecutive two consecutive wave consecutive weights shall be shall not differ more than 0.5 percent of the load. So, then it is fully saturated, then boil for 6 hours, then boil for 6 hours, 6 hours boiling, 6 hours boiling and the difference in weights of the dry and after boiling that is full saturation gives you the mass of moisture absorbed right and its volume we can find out by suspending it in you know taking a suspended weight through spring balance in a in a must condition fully must condition. So, you know the mass loss is equals to the volume of water displaced and so on. So, you can find out. So, therefore, overall volume can be found out and volume of pores will be represented by the mass of water that has gone in to difference in weight. So, one can estimate them STM, STM procedure is there for this. So, permeable porosity one can determine. So, this permeable porosity right this permeable porosity uh, this is permeable porosity. So, this is this is permeable porosity. So, for various bricks for example, fire bricks are those bricks which are used in refractories. <coughs> okay. So, generally they have high I mean sorry not this high Al 2 O 3 high alumina content in this clay of fire bricks. So, obtained from surface clay bricks are obtained from I mean clay bricks are obtained first you remove the organic soil then go to one level below the clay that you get you is called surface clay and uh, that brick is our ordinary clay bricks. Normally they will have less of this one this is fire bricks which are produced at a you know it comes down below at lower level and can sustain much higher temperature. So, that is why they are used in refractories, but coming back to this. So, their solid conductivity estimated is something like this the fraction of enclosed pores is something like this and bulk density would be somewhat higher you can see and uh, then aerated concrete there also something of like this kind flyers bricks or a similar kind density is much less because they would have actually done some autoclaving in this particular types right flyers some local sand and uh, uh, part of the lime or cement and then heat it up boil, heat it up to get the autoclave to cure it and then that is what it is. So, this solid conductivity is less in this particular one. So, supposing we want to find out the thermal conductivity of bricks with porosity let us say 30 percent you know this range is 29 to 45.7. So, first is clay brick with porosity 30 percent. Now, we have seen this conductivity of the solid is 0.2.56. So, and fraction of enclosed pores is 0.567. So, our equation was something like this this constants A1, B1, etcetera, etcetera, up to E2, one can estimate putting this equals to 0.3, right. So, 0.3 means 0.3 means 0 0.09. So, it is about 10 percent to year something like this. So, if you look you know if you find out 
the value of a 1 which is this. So, put p equals to 0.3 and uh, this you calculate out it comes out to be 0 0.49 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4.9411. Similarly, b 1 using the same equations which I have shown you earlier and all the constants works out to be like this. Now, remember then we expanded this I mean we use this to find out the value of some equivalent conductivity all in dry state at the moment. So, A 1 into solid conductivity plus B 1 it comes out with 13.751 1 by lambda 1 d we have found out lambda 2 d similarly one can find out is 0 0.641. So, one of them where you know where you have uh, uh, you can see the conductivity is very less here which means that actually pores are enclosing the solid. So, they are enclosing pores lambda 1 d because 1 by lambda d. So, 1 by lambda lambda 1 d will be 1 by 13.751 which will be small and this is pore is enclosed. So, you have got a solid path all around the pore. So, if this is your pore this let us say is our pore right this let us say is our pore. So, this is the pore. Now, solids will have a path heat flow path would be like this heat flow path the solids can go like this you know heat, heat, heat flow path can go like this. But when you have the other way around the case where you have this is your these are your pores essentially majority of it is pore. So, this this is pores and the solid is inside solid is inside the solid is inside solid is inside right solid is inside. In that case conductivity will be much less because it is you know the path of solid path is just connected through some interconnectivity right. This is pores inside is solid. So, solid is connected through some interconnection. So, therefore, this is much less here the pore these are all solid. So, heat flow path would be much less here because there is an in you know around the pore there is an interconnection. So, these are large, largely open type of pores these are closed types of pores and therefore, this conductivity values comes like something like this. Then similarly one can find out then one can find out K d by K s using that formula which we gave which we gave earlier K 1 d to the power 1 by this fraction of pores and this is a fraction of uh, this this is the you know other type. <coughs> so, fraction of you know so putting this into the equation one gets K e d by K s equals to 0 0.25. So, therefore, conductivity will be 2.56 into 0 0.60, 0 0.69 watt meter Kelvin because K E D by K S is equals to 0.25, K S we had 2.56 just now we have seen that from this table we have taken. So, we have taken from this table 2.56. So, if you know the solid conductivity you know you can know the solid conductivity you can actually estimate in this manner. And if you find out in the similar manner K E S to find out K E S what it will do instead of finding 1 by lambda d you will find out 1 by you know you will find out 1 by lambda 1 s and then lambda 2 s in same equation. So, if you to want to find out lambda 1 s and 2 s the formula is here formula you are here a b c d a b c d e you know. So, this formula was there. So, for example, it was you know this formula one can use and find out the values for we just use write down this a 1 and b 1 and a 2 and b 2 and then c 1 d 1 c 2 d 2 e 2 this 3 1 can utilize to find out the value of the constants. And once you have found out the value of the constants you can use to find out you know k e s is given by this formula k e s is given by this formula k e s by k s this is 2.56 this value we have found out this value we have found out f is 0 0.567 whatever it is that we looked into. So, then you can estimate the K E S also. So, estimated K E S comes out to be 0 0.69 multiplied by 2.656 to 1.77. So, using these tables and charts you can actually estimate the conductivity right this example is there just you got to check those calculation yourself you can check them. So, but this is this is you know saturated what about the intermediate uh, moisture content? The empirical one was Jacobs factor which is a multiplying factor I mentioned sometime there is a factors. 
but <coughs> you want to do it a little bit more accurately <coughs> or somewhat better generally one can observe that this, this is your degree of saturation degree of saturation for example, brick what is degree of saturation the moisture content divided by the moisture content at saturation at saturation right. So, this is what we call and generally denote sometime by theta is degree of saturation. So, degree of saturation is the mass of the moisture or moisture content at a particular moisture in a particular level divided by the saturation moisture content. Now, degree of saturation if you it, if you plot it against thermal conductivity you get something like this. It tends to increase with degree of saturation as the moisture content increases that we have seen earlier and then becomes a steady value at the saturation near saturation level. Now, what is the reason behind this? What is the reason behind this? Actually water conducts 25 times more than that of air that is the first thing. So, water conducts 25 times more than that of water this was one issue. more <coughs> than air. So, if it is moisture comes into the com, you know such porous material then thermal conductivity will increase. And as we have seen the last example what we have seen the dry conductivity was something like 0.65 or something right if you have seen the last time 0 0.639 and 1.77. So, it can be few folds right it can be few folds. So, the insulation quality can reduce down significantly in presence of moisture in presence of moisture you know it is actually 3 times nearly 3 times. So, this can change significantly this can change significantly. So, water conducts 25 times more then then air and uh, also there can be phenomena like evaporation condensation. What is evaporation condensation? the moisture at the hot phase evaporates and in the when it goes to the colder region it again becomes water from vapor to the water. So, therefore, it is just converts you know latent heat is taken absorbed first and discharged or dissipated on the cold zone. So, hot to cold zone there can be a heat transfer by evaporation and condensation. Now, one can actually model that, but uh, in the real material with the types of pores their interconnectivity it becomes difficult, but empirically one can see that the K E m is the thermal conductivity with the moisture it is a function of degree of saturation in a you know the equation empirical equation could be of the quadratic form because it increases and then therefore, it stabilizes. So, this is for brick let us say for other porous material it will be similar for concrete also it is similar degree of saturation to conductivity. So, this is something of the kind. So, therefore, you, well, you get a general equation of this form K E m the most conductivity conductivity at some moisture content or at theta degree of saturation is given by something of this form. And I can then you know theta theta is defined in this manner weight of the sample moist sample minus the dry weight divided by saturated minus dry weight. So, that is how I would define degree of saturation. So, <coughs> C is when theta is equals to 0 degree of saturation is equals to 0 is the dry conductivity. So, C is nothing but you put C equals theta equals to 0 K E m becomes K E d. So, this is K E d and one thing we have seen that since it is parabolic if I differentiate it you know it is a curve of this form right. So, either at the peak it will be maximum or near peak it will be maximum and there may be sometimes some reduction also. So, one can find out the value you know one can use this kind of a relationship for example, differentiate this with respect to theta that will be 0 that will be maximum K e m differentiate this with respect to theta 
and uh, you one can you know one can then get the degree of saturation corresponding to maximum moist conductivity from this one simply you 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 know differentiate this you will get 2 a theta plus b equals to 0. So, theta max can be simply theta max at maximum thermal conductivity is minus b by 2 a that is what one can get. Okay. So, once one therefore, using this 2 that th if theta max is equals to 1 which is a peak because that saturation that is the maximum, then simply this is equals to 1. So, A is equals to minus B by 2. So, usually the curve is curve as we are seeing the curve, usually is 1, it is maximum at peak at 1, there is also maximum peak at 1, right. So, using this condition, one gets A equals to minus B by 2, right. So, trying to generalize, do some generalization. For theta is equals to 1, Kem is equals to K saturated. Theta equals to 0, moist conductivity is equals to K dry. And when theta is, is, is equals to 1, Kem is equals to Kes. You know, this was the equation. So, this degree of saturation, when this is equals to 0, Kem is equals to simply C is equals to Ked. When theta is equals to 1, this is nothing but K m is equals to K saturated. So, use this use this relationship. So, one this then therefore, I can write K saturated is equals to A theta square plus B theta plus K D. Because when theta is equals to 1, you know it is saturated and theta is equals to 1. Uh, sorry a plus b this is b. theta is equals to 1 this can be written as ks is equals to ks is equals to let me use the regular eraser and erase this out when theta is equals to 1 for theta is equals to 1 km equals to ks so i can write it like this in other words in other words kes minus ked is equals to this because the maximum value you get at saturation generally maximum value you get at saturation. So, you can what you can do is you can take de, delta k e m divided by d theta equals to 0 of that equation which was of this form you know a square plus a theta square plus b theta minus plus c and you can differentiate this is equals to 0 and generally this is at theta max corresponding theta max corresponds to theta equals to 1 at maximum saturation you get 1. So, this is the other equation that you get this is the other equation you get, this is the other equation you get, right. So, we have seen that A equals to minus B by 2, A equals to minus B by 2. So, K that B by 2 is equals to K E S, B by 2 is equals to K E S minus K D, you know you put them in equation, this equation. So, you will get B by 2 is equals to K E S because this is equals to A plus B is equals to uh, A plus B is equals to K e s minus K d put a equals to minus b by 2 you know put a equals to minus b by 2. So, put minus b by 2 plus b which is equals to b by 2. So, K e s minus K e d is equals to either a or minus you know is b by 2 K e s or you put put you know b is equals to 2 a minus 2 a either way. So, you get this, this is the expression you get. So, just I put them into the overall equation K e m by because I just put them into the equation straight away B is equals to 2 K e s minus K d A equals to K e s minus K d. So, my equation therefore, would be equals to K e m is equals to A that would be minus you know that was minus K e s minus K d. K e s minus K d and the second one is B, B the expression comes out to be 2 K e s minus K d. So, 2 K e s minus K d into theta square and this theta plus K e d. So, if I simplify this a little bit you know or take K e s K d 
on K E S K D on you know on one side, I will get I will get a now I will get an expression of this kind. <coughs> K E S K D I can actually get K E M minus K E D. So, take this as I said K E M was equals to first of all uh, what was it minus A which was K E S minus K E D right into theta square plus 2 K E S minus K E D theta plus K E D. So, I can take this on the other side. So, I will get K E M minus K E D K E D divided by this two term is common I can take it out and I get this kind of an expression. So, what kind of expression I am getting? I am getting something like this. So, K E M by you know so this two theta. So, this I define as you know this was this was degree of saturation which is nothing but relative moisture content. This is nothing but if you can see this is a saturation this is dry and this is again dry and this is the moist condition. So, this degree of saturation we how do we define? We define like this weight moist minus W d and W saturation minus W d that is equals to theta. So, there is a similarity here there is a similarity here and we define this as we define this as phi phi is nothing but so phi is nothing but phi is the relative thermal conductivity relative thermal conductivity is degree of saturation so phi is alpha theta you know there can be a general equation of this form but uh, usually no you know you you get i mean this the relative moisture relative conductivity is a function of theta and theta square in this form one can get so these are known from you know these are known if this is known one can obtain K E M and we have seen that using the model I can find out K E S I can find out K E D and at any moisture content any any degree of saturation therefore, I can determine K E M. So, moist conductivity I can so K E S K D can be determined from model as we have done earlier. So, in our earlier case at 30 percent porosity K E D was 0 0.69 K E S at 0.177. So, K E M at let us say some moisture content right say at 30 percent degree of saturation this value will come out to be 0 0.3 square 0 0.3 square plus you know plus 2 into 0.3 and if you this is this, this term and this divide this by the difference between these two plus at 0.69 you get out. So, at 30 percent degree of saturation you get conductivity is equals to 1.22. So, one can estimate the moist conductivity slightly more realistically using this kind of an equation right. So, what you see is that relative thermal conductivity is a function of degree of saturation which is nothing but relative moisture content. So, one can one can estimate this conductivity. Now, one can look into evaporation condensation for modeling purpose if one wants to look into but it is as I said this is not easy to incorporate into a porous material thing because the pores interconnectivity the condensation occurring from you know like the evaporation occurring from which front and their connectivity this there, there, there is a little bit of problem although one can possibly extend this model because we know the pore sizes at which capillary condensation occurs uh, you know that, that uh, one can find out from Kelvin's equation, but I think I will not go into that but just try to explain the phenomena of evaporation condensation. Uh, fixed flow again. So, the amount of moisture vapor that would evaporate is a function of we know the concentration it is a function of concentration gradient, gradient right. So, moisture flux now assuming this as a ideal gas moisture vapor as an ideal gas. So, you can write pressure because this would you see basically it is the vapor pressure difference which causes the flow vapor to flow. Now, uh, more moisture content you know vapor pressure is a function of the moisture content itself. So, this is ideal gas flow and for moisture vapor you can put it this way right. So, what is this B by you know uh, m basically v by m w is nothing but v by or m w by v sorry uh, v by m w small m w yeah 
m w by small v is not concentration is defined as mass per unit volume. So, this is the mass, this is the volume, so this is nothing but C w. So, one can then find out the one can one can C w can be written in terms of P w. So, this is P w divided by you know P w into M w divided by R t and M R you know M w by R t or R t by M w can be written as R w which is specific gas constant for moisture vapor right. So, you know this universal gas constant divided with the molecular weight that gives you the specific gas constant of the moisture vapor. So, P w by T. So, therefore, d c d x one can write out like d p d x because it can be expressed in terms of vapor pressure and uh, if you have done earlier the course those who have done course on building science we actually derived the relative humidity versus relative humidity with respect to moisture content relationship there it would have come and the same thing nothing there is the same thing. So, using ideal gas flow one can show that concentration vapor concentration is a function gradient is a function of vapor pressure gradient in this manner. So, therefore, this can be written as Q flow can be written as d p d d p w d x in this manner. Partial pressure is the sum of pressure of air plus pressure of you know total pressure atmospheric pressure is the sum of partial pressure of air dry air plus partial vapor pressure or you know vapor pressure. So, P A they will all follow ideal gas flow. So, P A V A is equals to I can write for air dry air. Similarly, I can write for vapor and G is the moisture content from this it follows because moisture content is nothing but mass of the vapor divided by mass of dry air and molecular weights of air is around 28 because nitrogen you know it, it dominates. So, majority is 90.78 per 78 percent is nitrogen around uh, 20 percent is oxygen. So, one can calculate out molecular weight of nitrogen, oxygen etcetera. So, molecular of weight of air is around 28 point something, this is 18, molecular weight of water is 18. So, this ratio comes out to be 18 divided. So, moisture content can be written in this manner, moisture content can be written is in this manner, moisture content can be written in this manner because M B divided by M A is the G moisture content and this from this equation it will follow this value is around 18 point something, this is around 28 point something, the R will cancel out T etcetera will cancel out because they are same temperature. So, P A pressure of P A, P A, P A can be written as P 0 minus P V. So, that is how it is. So, the ratio of this two 18 divided by 28 and this 0 0.622 you know 18 point something and this and rest all this cancels out, this cancels out, the, the volume is same. So, P V divided by you know G moisture content is related to pressure of the air which is P 0 minus P V into this. So, one can obtain this sort of a relationship for moisture content in the air. So, delta G change in moisture content causes change in vapor pressure, change in moisture content. So, delta G if my moisture content changes, so that would cause vapor pressure change as delta P V right. So, then Q can be written Q was D W D C D P D you know you can read it, it can be written in terms of this is what we did. So, it can be written concentration I am just changing. So, if, if you know delta G L delta G I can write latent heat of evaporation. So, heat if this is the amount of heat that is going in that would be multiplied by amount of moisture vapor transporting multiplied by the latent heat of evaporation. So, delta G is this therefore, if I write it in terms of an equivalent conductivity d p d you know equivalent conductivity will be per unit area this is also per unit area that is 622 everything remains same. What I will do is I will write this as d p w d p d p w d t can be written as d p d p you know d p d x and d t d x. So, this can this will just break into d p w d x into 1 by d t d x or whatever it is. So, you can get an equivalent conduction term equivalent conduction term you can get it 
you can get an equivalent conduction term, you can get an equivalent conduction term from here, right. So, because this d t d x k is k is d t d x right k is k d t d x. So, from this one can get an equivalent conduction term. Now, if you put this into the equation of k you know moisture equation into the put it into the equation of k e m and try to estimate k e m one can actually do that, but uh, I think at the moment it is not easy to do that. So, if the phenomena of evaporation condensation you understand what is happening basically there is a vapor pressure difference because of the moisture content itself where there is high moisture content vapor pressure is higher where there is a low moisture content vapor pressure is lower and due to that vapor tends to flow and at certain temperature there will be condensation occurring at dew point condensation will be occurring. So, if your inner phase or the cold phase is lower than dew point condensation will occur and the amount of heat that would go in. So, you can derive some kind of an equivalent conductivity, but relating it to the porous metal is at the moment is difficult. So, the concept of evaporation condensation is something like this, but perhaps we will restrict ourselves to the empirical equation of this kind that we looked into and one can calculate this out right. Okay. So, that is related to effect of moisture this is very important one has to take that. So, if there is a moisture particularly post rainy season warm humid scenario the moisture content of the bricks could be much higher wall walls could be much higher. So, thermal conductivity can change significantly insulation quality may be reduced although people do not estimate it in that way. But I mean if if you are looking at an looking at an at a building then you might look into this. So, then we will look into thermal diffusivity we will break for a moment and then come back to this. <coughs>